Most people are breathing incorrectly and it causes lots of problems for your back. In this video, I'm going to show you why that is. I'm going to show you how to spot it and I'm going to show you how to fix it. Stay tuned. I'm Dr. Daniel Bridge and I'm a chiropractor in Helena, Montana. And this channel is dedicated to getting you stronger, getting you moving and keeping you healthy. All right. So to understand proper breathing mechanics, we first need to understand the core. Our core is just like this can of paint. It's a cylinder. So people always say, hey, I'm going to go work my core. Typically what they're talking about is they're going to do abs or crunches or something else to get that six pack. Your core is definitely made up of your abs there on the front. And then you have your obliques and your transverse abdominals on the sides. And then you have your back muscles on the back. And then the top of the can, the lid, is your diaphragm. And the bottom would be your pelvic floor. Today we're really going to focus on the diaphragm, how that ties into your breathing, and how it ties in to stabilizing your core. To find out if you have dysfunctional breathing patterns, grab a friend, have them get out their phone, and start to film you. Standing up nice and straight, I want you to take five normal breaths, and then I want you to take five deep breaths. And as you're analyzing the footage, here's what you're looking for. When you breathe in, watch your chest, watch your shoulders, watch your ribs. Someone with dysfunctional breathing, their shoulders are going to go way up when they take especially those deep breaths, like so. When they're breathing normally, you might see nasal flaring. And then outside of this activity, someone who has excessive yawning. Those are all signs of somebody with dysfunctional breathing. See, we breathe like an accordion. An accordion player, let's take Weird Al for example, one of the greatest. Uh, when you pull that accordion open like that, it forces air inside and then you squeeze it together and it forces air out. So in order for us to get air into our lungs, we either need to raise the top of that accordion by bringing our shoulders up and expanding our ribs up, or we need to drop the bottom. And that bottom muscle is what I just talked about, which is the diaphragm. When the diaphragm contracts, it comes down and it pulls air in through our mouth. Uh, that is the proper way to breathe, is by activating that diaphragm. However, for whatever reason, more than 50% of people out there, uh, probably closer to 80%, when they take a deep breath or they breathe at all, they're, they're using their chest and they're using their shoulders. So next we're going to go over why is it important to use your diaphragm and how you can train yourself and your nervous system and how to get that muscle to activate effectively to improve your breathing mechanics. So when you're using your diaphragm just like you should, it's going to contract down, it's going to compress down, sucking air up in through your mouth, filling your lungs just like it should, and then it's going to create this great pressure around your lower back. And when I say great, I mean it in a good way. Um, it's stabilizing and it's strengthening your lumbar spine. So just like employees at uh, Home Depot, they're wearing that back brace, they're doing that to create extra pressure. pressure. around their lower back and around that lower spine. But if we're doing that with natural breath work, we can accomplish a similar feat by bracing and stabilizing that lumbar spine. Very effective for protecting our back, to keep us uh, pain-free, and to help us to avoid injury. The motion of our ribs is much like a bucket handle. Um, if this was the front of our chest and this was our back and this was our rib, as it moves, as we take a deep breath with our shoulders, we're bringing these ribs up. And one of the muscles that we're using are called our intercostal muscles. They're these little muscles that go in between each one of our ribs and they contract up to help us to breathe. Uh, however, if we're using those 20 plus thousand times a day, um, it's going to cause some dysfunction where our rib meets our thoracic spine, our, our middle back. And it can cause what feels like a, a muscle, a, a knot in our muscle. So when you get that sharp pain right behind your shoulder blade, and you get it massaged and it helps for like a few minutes, but it never actually goes away, that's usually a rib. Those respond really well to chiropractic adjustments, but if we're not overtaxing our muscles and our ribs in that area in the first place, then we're much less likely to ever get that problem to begin with. So proper breathing, utilizing our diaphragm, not focusing on our chest and our shoulders is gonna give those the muscles is going to give those muscles the break that they need so that they can function as they're supposed to. Another test that you can do uh, involves laying down on your back, placing a hand right over your belly button, 
and one right on top of your sternum. And then take a deep breath. You want this hand to go up and you want the hand on your chest to stay relatively in the same position. All right, let me show you how to fix this. Um, placing one hand on your stomach over your belly button, one hand on your chest, take a deep breath in for two seconds and then let it out for six seconds and it's gonna look like this. As you breathe in, the hand comes out. And as you breathe in, the hand comes in. Stomach out, stomach in. Out while you're breathing in, in while you're breathing out. I know it can be kind of counterintuitive, especially if you were taught to suck in your stomach when you were breathing in, but by doing this over and over and over again, we create a groove. Just like when a herd of cattle walk through a field, they create a trail. That's what we need to do with the neurons in our brain because this is a, a bad habit that we've developed over years of breathing with our chest and our shoulders. So the way to do that is you wanna take two to three intentional belly breaths every hour, as well as 10 to 20 right when you wake up in the morning and then another 10 to 20 before you go to bed. I know it sounds like a lot. It's not that bad if you get into the habit. One way to help you get into the habit, uh, I've had patients set alarms on their phones. Um, some people don't like to be so tied to technology and they'll put stickers around the house, on the TV, on the microwave, on the door when they're leaving, uh, coming and going from, from their home. And they use that as a reminder of, oh, time to do my two to three breaths. It doesn't take very long, it takes less than a minute. And it's gonna help to groove that breathing pattern so it becomes a very natural way for you to breathe. Statistics show that most of the people that watch this video aren't gonna be subscribed. So if you did like it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to our channel, it helps us out a lot, and you'll get to see more cool content keeping you healthy.